Okay, here we are. We're back. This is uh, Full Moon Podcast with your host, Stephen Witsit. We are back to reviewing and having an afterglow of the Witsit based in debate on 4 2022 You can hear the entirety of it. It is also on my Elijah Bones uh, channel, and it is here. And I have the link, of course, put into the description here so that you can find it. And you can see that everything and anything I pull, pull out is within context. I've changed nothing, manipulated nothing. You, you have the exact quotes of what he says and what he does. So with that said, we're on to clip number five. Now, remember the last one we talked about? He has two resurrections that he's talking about. The one resurrection of the saints coming out of Hades into heaven. The second one is uh, the new birth when everybody gets saved, which is from now until eternity. As long as everybody, you know, whoever gets in Christ is experiencing uh, resurrection. You have for an individual. How many resurrections have you for an individual? If he was already alive, you mean, so he died, he was buried, Christ brought him back physically, and since there is a resurrection of physical dead, never to die again, is Pharaoh still here? Okay, what he's talking about, he, he's applying my definition of resurrection. And I, we talked about this before. My definition is a singular, one type of resurrection. And that is the physical bodies coming out of the grave as Anastasis Necron demands that is the standing again of a corpse. We do not call the new birth a resurrection. We call it regeneration, where we are justified, our sins are washified, washed away, and we are sanctified in Christ. That is called the new birth. That's what he told Nicodemus, right? Um, it yeah, if you you have to be born again, regenerate, remade. Um, it is not a re resurrection of the old man. The old man is dead. That's the idea of, of resurrection is, is that he hears you, you go into the body, in the grave, like water, into a grave. You come out. What's different about you? The old man is dead. You left him behind in the water. This is a new person that's come out. You've raised and resurrected into a new uh, a new being, and you are now in Christ. The old man, the old nature that was a slave to sin is gone. Uh, as Paul said, slave to sin or married to sin. It is gone. That's the lesson of Romans 6. So that is the one resurrection that I'm talking about. Now what he wants to do is say, well, if there's only one resurrection, then why, you know, Lazarus, he was raised up. Well, why didn't he get to live forever? That's the one resurrection, the bodily resurrection that you're talking about. No, he is the first fruits. So Lazarus and the others who were raised, I never said that they were receiving glorified bodies. They were not raised the way Jesus was. Jesus was the first to be raised in a glorified body and raised uh, to be eternal and to never die again. Nobody ever said that Lazarus or anybody else uh, that we talked about all the way through scriptures was ever raised to new life in the sense of uh, being raised immortal and imperishable. Christ only and those that following after at his coming. He was the first fruits there. The others at his coming will be raised uh, physically, bodily, into uh, bodies. <laughs> what about the young boy in First Kings chapter 17 that you brought up? You said this is it. This is what he's talking about. This is it's eternal life. It's all physical. And that's a straw man, of course, because that's not what I ever argued. And, and so here's the problem with, with David. He rejected my definitions. He's trying to use an argument based on his definitions of how he understands it. And therefore, we don't communicate. And it's partially why I had to ignore a lot of what he said, because um, didn't establish, refused to establish definitions for words. Um, I said there was one resurrection. That's theologically correct, but he's not buying it, of course. Um, let's go on. Is Lazarus still walking the planet? No, no, of course not. Because I never said those guys were raised immortal. Now, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to say that the last enemy is death that Christ has destroyed and we're going to take a look at that right now. Let's take a quick peek at that. And for 2 Timothy chapter 1, 2 Timothy, chapter 1. 
I I know where he's going with this, and so let's go to it. Second Timothy chapter one. Now hmm. he's going right in through here. All right, let's let's listen to him what he's what he's saying. Me, the last enemy. Um, I'm going to do this since we're going to be in this a lot through these series. Uh, right here. I'm going to go to, yeah, you notice it goes faster because I shut off the other one that I was not using. And that way it goes much faster. So 1 Corinthians 15. And here's my point. Here's what I argued. Now, we know that he is talking to Christians all the way through there. The dead in Christ. And go back up here, right? Uh, for the dead are not raised, not even Christ is raised. He goes through all those. If in Christ we have this hope only. So uh, by one man came death. Mm. And then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom of God the Father after destroying rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he puts all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy is to be destroyed is death. Now, in this whole context here of those falling asleep, sleep, he is talking about physical death. He's not talking about spiritual death. But that's what Basin wants it to be, is spiritual death. Um, he tries to put that in there, and that just does not work. And why? Because it is the dead in Christ who rise first, the dead are those who are in Christ. They're Christians. This is not talking then about coming out of spiritual death into spiritual life. That's an impossibility. Number two, why? These are Christians. When was Paul saved? When was, did he get into Christ? Now you heard based in on the other pod, podcast talk about washing and the regeneration, you know, washing and regeneration. It is a, a way of your sins that, that you are in Christ. So everybody in the church here that we're talking about are Christians that are in Christ. That means they've already experienced that first resurrection that he talked about. He said the first resurrection is what? The new birth, being people raised up to be in Christ. Not coming out of Hades into heaven. He's saying that those people are saved. So when did that happen? Well, Paul on the road to Damascus, Peter. When, when those 5,000 there, they were saved that day. They, quote, experienced his definition of what resurrection is. It's ongoing. He said so. So it started there in the first generation and in first century church and, and it continues on. Well, if those guys were raised first, then what does that mean? That was the first death that was conquered with spiritual death. How was it overcome? The washing and regeneration. Washing of your sins away. What part is, can't we understand about that? And so they experience a second resurrection. Coming out of Hades into thing. There's your number two, right? But here it says what? The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Well, how can spiritual death be the last enemy? When it was the first, when it was defeated at the cross. And you overcame it by being washed in the blood of the Lamb. The washing away of it. You're justified and sanctified. Um, do you see this double standard in here? This this illogical thought process that he is going through? And that's what happens when you don't have your theology done. You just you screw it up right and left. The verse is 10. Let's just see. Let's just see what Paul has to say about this. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death. Who has done what? Abolish death. He's a oh. So you mean when you mean Timothy never died? Now is that your position? Oh wait a minute. Do I get the Please wrong? Please tell us. Jesus Christ, who has abolished death. I gotta go to who the. Who has done oh, what? First Timothy. Abolish death. Okay. He's a oh. So you mean when? Um. Where is he at? He's in verse ten. Okay. There it is. Now, who saved us and called us to his holy calling, not because of our work, but because of his purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ. So he appeared the first time. There you go. He will appear a second time, but we're not talking about the second coming, right? Who abolished death and brought life and immortality to the light through the gospel. 
There you have it, folks. What did I just say? He abolished spiritual death. He abolished... What? Wait, what? Our, the appearing of... Who abolished death and brought life. Well, he's talking about spiritual life. Right? They brought spiritual life and mortality to light through the gospel. Okay, so that's the first. That's not the second. Appearing of, who abolished death and brought life. What kind of death? Well, he abolished spiritual death, according to you, and brought life and immortality, light through the gospel. So if that happened before 70 AD, then 70 AD means what? Souls out of Hades into heaven. There's your second one. You mean Timothy never died now? Is that your position? Please tell us. Inquiring minds want to know, did Timothy die? Paul said, Christ abolished death. You say it's physical. Seeing that all were dead, Christ died for all. You say it's physical. Behold, all things have been made new. Why? Because Christ became sin for us. Though he knew no sin, you say that never happened. Sin separates you from God. Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 and 2 says, Your sins have separated you from your God. That's sin death. That's the wages of sin is death. Now, let's go on. So you heard it right here, folks. Right from the word of mouth. This is the problem then with the debate. He keeps going back and forth, back and forth, and would never accept the fact that I don't agree and accept that the regeneration, justification, sanctification is called resurrection. It's not. It's called the new birth. There's no, yeah. You raise up in Christ, the metaphor. I, uh, uh, I don't think... We're at 12 minutes. Uh, I'm not going to go on to, I do want to, but I really don't. And you've heard it, you've heard it here, folks. So um, you can go to his thing and look at it. Uh, let's see, six. We're continuing on. I wanted on. you to clarify because I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And I wanted you to clarify this. Okay, we'll go into the next one and answer questions. So this, yeah, is going to be the short 12, 13-minute one. Thanks for listening, and uh, uh, we'll come back with the next point. Because the reason I want to keep these short and simple is so that you can grasp it and deal with it and look at it and look at the scriptures and 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 uh, hear what I am saying without a whole lot of mumbo-jumbo. So, here's the music again. 